I've struggled with this, and maybe you have too. Third question is this. How should a Christian respond to beggars? We've all seen them, right? We've all seen them. Uh, many street corners. We were in Colorado um, walking up and down these little towns uh, exploring, and there were people on the side of the street. Um, we see them. They're under bridges. So how should a Christian respond to beggars? Many opinions on it, and the opin opinions differ. People point out the Bible verse in Thessalonians that says, you know, they sh you know, if the person doesn't work, they shouldn't eat. That's taken out of context. It's talking about people not carrying their fair share of the load. So some people will say, how should Christians respond? Well, they just shouldn't give. Christians shouldn't give to the beggars because if I give them money, they're going to take that money and I'm going to enable them to buy drugs, alcohol, and whatever, and fill in the blank. And so many people will stand and stake that as their claim, that I'm not giving to beggars because I don't want to be responsible. I don't know what they're going to do with what I give them. And so what they need is affordable housing. They need financial security. They need all of these things. So I'm going to work through these other systems to bring about change. Other viewpoint is that, other viewpoint is that we should give to beggars. Now, biblically speaking, so the question, how should a Christian respond to beggars, isn't a matter of opinion. Biblically speaking, God tells us in his word that we should, and he actually commands us to, give to the poor. Very clearly. Um, Proverbs 14.31 Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker. Capital M. Maker. But he who is generous to the needy honors him. Proverbs 19 and verse 17 Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Hebrews 13 verse 6 or verse 16 do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Now, my natural reflex, I'm speaking from me to you, the natural tendency that I find myself falling into is they should just get a job when I see it. I'm being honest. And sometimes like they need to get a job. And when the moment I think it or I feel it or I'm thinking in my head, oh, they're a, they're, they're a con artist here. It's a scam. What's happening in my heart is that's a natural reaction, but it's a sinful reaction. Because whenever I think that in my heart and in my head, what I'm saying is I'm not getting into their story. I'm not even concerned about their welfare. And I have placed a judgment on them that I have perceived, whether from experience, whether right or wrong, and what happens is indifference begins to set in my heart. And then when we're indifferent, indifference causes um, inaction. And so my natural reaction, most often than not, is not God's reaction. Okay? And so I do believe, biblically speaking, that as we're able, Christians should give to the poor. Um, how you give is between you and the Lord doesn't mean that you're going to go hand money to everybody who's begging. You may not be able to do that. How you give is between you and God. But how should we respond to them? Again, very practical things just for me to share with you. First, how do we respond to beggars? We should respond to beggars with love and compassion, first of all. They're in a situation that we are not in. There, we're not the ones in the heat of the Texas day standing out there and we can place judgment all we want saying, oh, I'm sure somebody dropped them off. Quit the thinking like that. They're standing out there vulnerable regardless. Have you ever been in a point where you had to stand at a street corner or, or go on the side of a street and ask somebody for money or food or to pay your bills? It takes a lot of humility to be able to even do that. So, we have to approach people with love and compassion. And as you see them, follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. And I can't tell you how many times that's happened with us. And I'm not saying, oh, look at Liz and myself. But there have been times that God has put it on our heart to give. Or God has put it on our heart to turn around and, and to say something or to, to give something. Now, if you feel unsafe and you, 
you're not wanting to give money, it's okay to say, I don't feel like it's very wise for me to give you money, but let me go in here. Do you need groceries? Let me go buy you something. You know, if they say no, you're trying. If they deny that, you're trying. You know, can I get money for gas? You know, I don't feel like it's very wise for me to give you money. How about I go over here to your car and I'll put some gas in your, your car, okay? Or be very practical. If it's hot outside, have something cool in the car when you're driving. Or if it's hot or cold in the winter, um, some churches will do blessing bags. They'll have like socks and perishable, uh, non-perishable food items in your car that you can give them. And if you can't do any of those things, pray for the people. Pray for them. And pray that God would send somebody to help meet some of the needs that they have. But I don't think that we can get away with being indifferent. I don't think God would want his children to be indifferent towards those in need. Um, you think in the, the early church in Acts chapter 2, we're told that they sold all that they had and they gave to any who had need. Um, what does Jesus say um, to the, the rich young man who's wanting to know what the one thing he can do to have eternal life? He says, go sell all of your possessions, give to the poor. And what did he do? He left away upset because he had many possessions that he didn't want to part with. It um, doesn't mean to, to go in debt, but giving is sometimes a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of time. It might be a sacrifice of your, your money. Uh, but the worst thing that we could do is to have the ability to maybe purchase, I don't know, a loaf of bread or to purchase something or to put gas in somebody's car. If we have the ability to do it and all we look at them or we think in our heart, well, I'm going to pray for them, knowing that we have the ability to meet a temporary need um, that's one of the worst things that we could do, I believe. Um, but we need to let love and compassion shine through. Pray for them. It's not all about cash and money. I wish we could be like Jesus and the apostles and just heal diseases <laughs> and change circumstances, but we can't. You know, but I can relate to what, what Peter says about, you know, gold and silver I do not have, but what I have I give you. Now, in a different sense is I can, I can show you the love of the Savior that, that I've committed my life to. Now, you think of the Good Samaritan. I mean, there's plenty of material in the Bible for us to draw from um, to support that. It makes us uncomfortable. You know, we, we get uncomfortable. Um, we get uncomfortable, and we, we, we have seen people abuse money. But here's the things, you know, church, is this. You're not responsible with what people do with what you give them. Okay? You're only responsible for what you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to do. If God has put it on your heart and God is leading you to do something, to say something, um, you're not responsible for what happens. Charles Stanley used to always say, obey God and leave the consequences to Him. You be obedient to the Spirit's call and leave it up to God with what He does with it, right? That person may go squander everything He gave them. You know, they may just say, oh, yeah, go buy me a loaf of bread, and they may just completely disregard it. They may say no to you, um, but you're not responsible for that. I think that we're all looking to try to please God in how we're walking, uh, and we, we need to give attention to those around us who are in need. Uh, God calls us to do that.